Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Clinton Brown claims his son and daughter-in-law ruined a family vacation by being rude to his friend. All rise. Raymond and Sharon Brown say the unexpected friend was actually their father's much younger fiance. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. This is the case of Brown versus Brown. Mr. Brown, you are suing your son for $3,376.43, the cost of a vacation he ruined. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Brown, you say you did nothing wrong. Is no, that correct? Nothing wrong. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Mr. Brown, so you planned a vacation for your son? I did. And you? I did. I planned a vacation uh, after my wife had passed away. Okay. I thought it'd be great to have some time, family time together. I told my son I would pay for the rental at the Airbnb in Captiva in Florida. He agreed to that. How much was the Airbnb amount? The, the Airbnb amount was uh, $3,376.43. Oh, the exact amount you're suing for. That's All correct. All right, nothing that, that more. That was for the one week. All mm -hmm. right, and you have the receipt for that. I do. Let me see it, please. And so you said, hey, I think we should all go on a trip. I'm going to pay for it. That's correct. A, a, a family get-together. A family get-together. Yes. To just kind of bond and reconnect after the unfortunate death of your wife. I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, and so you just needed some time to decompress. Correct. I, I do understand that. Yes. And so who was coming on this trip? I, I was going on the trip. My, uh, my son, his wife, Sharon, their, their three kids. Um, I also brought along uh, a friend. Okay. Uh, Mary Ann. All right. And so, Mr. Brown to the son, uh, this is your wife standing with you. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So, when your dad said, I think we need to just take a minute to decompress, go on a vacation, right? What was your response to that? I thought it was a really wonderful idea at first and a nice gesture. And I agreed to it with my wife and my family. But when we got to the house in Florida, he had brought a guest that we were not told about. And her behavior was not appropriate for the children. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was your understanding? My Who understanding was, going on was this trip? just this just our family. Just dad? Just you, dad. Your wife? Wife and three kids. And I've, you guys had three kids? Yes. Okay, what are their ages? Uh, two five year olds and a three year old. Two five and three. Wow, you all are busy. <laughs> So, and what was this? This was an Airbnb. Was it like a house, an apartment? What was it like? It was a house. So you get there and you say, immediately you see a guest that you didn't think was invited. He hadn't mentioned it, but when we got to the place he started talking about, like I brought a friend and we were surprised. And you've never met and this friend? No, we have never met this friend before. And so who was the friend, Mr. Brown? Uh, her name's Mary Ann. All right. I met her a short time before going on this excursion with, with the family. Oh, a short time before. And I realized my wife had passed away. I was mourning my wife, but I fell in love with Marianne. Wait, I thought you said she was a friend. Well, she's, she's, she's a friend. I thought that they would, they would welcome her into the family. She's a friend. And to be very honest with you, Judge, uh, I had asked her to marry me. Oh, Lord, this ain't no friend. This is a fiance. Okay. Fiance, fiance, but she's a very nice person. She has a good job. Uh, we we fell uh, in love. To the son, Mr. Brown, did he introduce Marianne as his fiance, or did he say friend the way he introduced her in court? Uh, it was friend at the time, and uh, I do now know that they are engaged. But that's not what it was while we were out there in Florida. It was a friend at the time. He was calling her a friend, mm -hmm. and so. How long after your mom's passing was this trip? 
It's about four months. So about four months after her passing is when you went on this trip and then the friend came. Yes. So, Mr. Brown, is it your testimony that the truth was you really had already fallen in love and asked her to marry you, or did you ask her to marry you after the trip? Oh, no, I had already asked her to marry me. Oh. And I just thought I didn't want to just come right out and say, this is, you know, Marianne, my fiance. I wanted to kind of build towards that. Coming up. We were going to a beach. Marianne was wearing a bikini. So you also felt like the bikini wasn't appropriate. Right? Oh, I had no problem with it. I bet you did. Not a <laughs> <laughs> and later. Something in my soul, my core, it just wasn't sitting right. So, I mean, we broke, I broke up with him shortly after that, about a week. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Clinton Brown, who blames Raymond and Sharon Brown for ruining a family vacation. And how long were you and your wife married before she passed? We were married for 30 years. Oh, wow. And, and we, long, had, we, a had long, a very, we had an excellent marriage. There were no problems. My son was a little bit distant from me for the last few years of the marriage. I don't know why. So now, if you brought the friend, and even though you weren't being completely forthright as to the nature of the relationship, and that kind of evolved throughout the trip, why are you suing your son for the cost of the trip? Well, I can tell you exactly why I'm suing my son. It's because, from the get-go, as soon as they met Marianne, they didn't like her from the very start. They looked at her. She's younger than I am. She's in her late 20s. And how old are you? I'm 62. Okay, got and, you a young, a young one. But, All um, right. But I, I think love is love, and I don't know why they have a problem with that. Right away, they, were, they made her feel very uncomfortable. They gave her dirty looks. They called her names, very inappropriate names, that some I can't even, I can't even say in were front of you. Were you calling her names, Mr. Brown? Nothing that wasn't appropriate in the moment. I mean, my wife and I were very upset by the things that she was doing. I mean, what what was happening, Miss Brown? Feel free to jump in. What did you observe? So when we met Mary Ann, uh, she was already drunk. Oh. So her behavior made me feel very uncomfortable with keeping the kids around her. I felt that she was a hazard to their health, and so. What did you I, observe her doing? She was smoking cigarettes, and when I asked her not to smoke around the children because they were young, that was one, she one blew cigarette. the cigarette was smoke one cigarette. in my That's son's face. In your son's face? Yes, no. to show me that she, uh, I don't know. Did she you see that, Mr. Brown? Her she's, blowing smoke in your grandson's she, face? She was in our bedroom at the Airbnb. You were not at, there. At the nice house. We're in the bedroom. She, she lights a cigarette up. The grandkids come running in the room just as she was exhaling. That's and the next thing, next thing that happens... And they run into the smoke. They ran into the smoke. The next thing, she's giving Marianne and myself a lecture about the hazards of secondhand smoke that must have gone on for 15 minutes. He was not in the room when she blew smoke in my son's face. This was another instance. No. She was also smoking weed in the house. She smoking had a little weed vape. weed, too? Yes, she had one of the no. vape cartridges. Oh, she had a vape? And uh, she was also, when we went out to the beach, she wore uh, nipple covers and a thong in front of my children. No. Oh, boy. Yeah. Mm -mm. I have two daughters, and she, she I have a, a, a little boy. That's just not appropriate. And so, wait, Mr. Brown, now... You're dating somebody younger, you know, we don't need to judge that. But does she know how to act respectable around the children? That seems a little vague. She, she likes kids. She's great with kids. It's not about liking him. It's but, knowing but how to behave she, around she, him. she knew how to act. We were going to a beach. Marianne was wearing a bikini. She's very attractive. She probably wanted to, you know, just... So you also felt like the bikini wasn't appropriate, but you just didn't want to say anything to her, or you said you thought it was appropriate. Oh, I had no problem with it. I bet you did. Not a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what happened? I don't understand. So this is—I can already see this dynamic. 
is kind of throwing off the decompression that's supposed to be happening here. We're supposed to be in this house relaxing, I mean, trying to heal from the death of mom and wife, and now we've got Mary Ann She's adding a little bit of something to the mix that I don't think your kids expected. The, the, they are exaggerating greatly Marianne's behavior. And so, okay, let me just be honest and let's just get to the point. Everybody grieves in their own way. You wouldn't be the first nor the last man that finds comfort under the covers with somebody else. But that does not mean that your children are ready to process all of that. And even though your son is a grown man with a wife and with grandkids, this is still a very, very difficult time in all of your lives losing your wife, their mother. Well, her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what I think is interesting is that while you keep saying they owe you because I agreed to pay for the trip and they were going to pay for the activities, bring an entire person along that was not a part of the original conversation literally changes the dynamic of the entire trip. I, I, I didn't see a problem with that. Well, of course you didn't, because she was your guest, and she's your fiancé. I don't think that that was the appropriate time for you to bring your new fiancé to meet your son, his wife, and your grandkids. I think your judgment was off. And I also believe that you never formed a true contract here. What you did was offer a gift of a trip. Right? And even if it were, when you bring Marianne into the picture, deal's off. Because you never mentioned that in the first place. I've heard enough. Uh, plaintiff, Mr. Brown, your case is dismissed. A judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the co defendants. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I hope we can move on past some of these not so good times. I'll try, I'll try, but hopefully you can learn to like Marianne. Coming up. Y'all didn't have no argument? Well, no, it was like a silent exit. <laughs> that, that was surprising to me, Your Honor. <laughs> like, have you done a silent exit, Sean? <laughs>
soul, my core, it just wasn't sitting right. So, I mean, we broke, I broke up with him shortly after that, about a week after. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, it was, it was about a week later. Wait a minute. Now, you told this man you wanted to become a pescatarian. Yes, he did. took you all the way down to the fish market and bought you $600 worth of fish he, he to support your diet. He insisted on swiping. But something just didn't sit right in your spirit. No. And then a week later, you just said, I got to go. Yeah, I was out of there. Okay. I was out of there. But you see what had happened was he has this... Y'all really... didn't have no argument? Well, no. It was like a silent exit. <laughs> that, that was surprising to me, Your Honor, because she just get up one day and decided that she was going to end the relationship. Exit. Yeah, well, he has, like... Have it's... you done a silent exit, Sean? <laughs> so how... When do you do a silent exit? You just leave Pack like a and ghost? Leave. Pack and leave. So when he came home... When you came home, Ms. Si Mr. Simons, she wasn't there? Uh, she, uh, Your Honor, she just left. I thought that she probably went over to her friend's house and probably... Oh, you didn't it. even think she was gone? I, I didn't even That's thought how that silent she it yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she left. Um, and then I got a text from her saying something about uh, that she will... I would be dropping the keys off and I would be back for my fish, but I will let you know when I could come pick it up. Oh, you wanted to get your seafood out the freezer? Ye yes, Your Honor, most definitely. So on silent moves, you don't take the food out the refrigerator. You just take your clothes first. I, I didn't first. know where I was going to store it just yet. It's about 30 pounds of fish. Oh, so you were just saying, I'm done with you, I'm done with this relationship, but I'm not done with the fish. Absolutely. Okay. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Listen, it's not hard to see that you might have been struggling in the relationship or you might have just been struggling in your relationship with yourself. And I think you were in a good relationship, Thank you, but Your it Honor. probably wasn't good enough because you weren't mm. happy with yourself. When you left, I agree. I think he did buy that fish for you. I also think he bought it for you to eat in the home that you shared together. But regardless, he supported you. If when you did your silent exit, you took that fish out that day, I'm sure he wouldn't be standing in the plaintiff's podium talking about I'm suing her to get the money for my fish back. But you left the house without it. That says to the court, it wasn't that important to you. Yeah. But regardless, these are lessons that you learn as you grow and as you make mistakes. And you at least could have confronted him a week after he spent $600. So this time, you're going to have to learn this lesson. And it's going to be no fish for you to fry. <laughs> Plaintiff's case is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.